has been Control Falcon 42, 30 miles on the 170 radial, 10,000. Request radar vectors for GCA Ambly. Falcon 42, this is Brisbane Control. Turn left onto a heading of 320, maintain 10,000 as score guided. Falcon 42, 320. Flying the supersonic F 111 strike aircraft is a test of knowledge and concentration for pilots and navigators in the Royal Australian Air Force. An important part of their training is learning how to cope with emergencies. Uh, is that the fire warning now? Okay, we have engine fire on the left bow face sections. Left throttle is off. Left fire push button depressed. Agent discharge actuate. That's a concern. Roger, Mayday. Roger, Mayday. To Brisbane Control, please. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Falcon 42 is fire on the left engine, stand by front engines. Falcon 42, Brisbane Control, your Mayday is acknowledged, just standing by. Falcon 42. Roger, checklist, please. Roger, throttle affected engine is off. Fire push button tip. Agent act actuate. And just confirm the light is still on. Affirmative. Although the situation seems real, the effect is created in an aircraft simulator at the RAAF's Amberley base in Queensland. Air crews spend weeks mastering procedures in the simulator before taking their first flight in an F-111. Flying the aircraft is a valued experience, so training courses are intensive. Pilots and navigators have to be experienced in other military aircraft before they're given the chance to operate an F-111. During the next 18 weeks, you will learn to become proficient in the operation of the F-111C, one of the most sophisticated strike aircraft in the world. The aircraft is crewed by a pilot and navigator and you will learn to operate as a crew with each member relying on the competence of the other to achieve total mission success. Indeed, the F-111C is a real pilot and navigator aeroplane and crew coordination will be one of the essential elements to be emphasised during your training. You will be introduced to the mysteries of the swing wing and the many complex systems in the aircraft which combine to make the aircraft such an excellent and valuable weapons platform. The F-111 breaks many of the conventional design rules, so pilot and navigator students face learning new procedures. The design and layout of the instrument panel is just one of a number of areas unfamiliar to most of them. A special training module is used. What's the purpose then of the command MAC, airspeed and altitude indicators here? All right, sir, now they're part of the overall smaller digital readouts we get at the bottom of the tape, and in the case of the command bars themselves, we can reference airspeed to get a digital readout of what our airspeed at the time is, or in turn, we can reference a particular airspeed that we want for uh, rotation, liftoff, whatever. The altitude reference we can set up for an altitude that we're clear to, climbing to, descending to, or maybe a safety altitude for our low-level operations. Understanding the theory of the swing wing proves a challenge for the students. The F-111 can redesign itself in flight from the straight wing shape of a slow flying aircraft to an arrowhead shape for supersonic flight. All right, gentlemen, back at the 35 degree cruise wing suite we've got here, we utilize spoilers for roll control. The spoiler deploys to 45 degrees with the left roll input back to the wing, as we'll see now. And from this position, as the aircraft speed increases, the pilot can selectively sweep the wings all the way back to the full aft 72 position for high speed, low level flight, supersonic if necessary. The pace of training is demanding and moments of relaxation are rare. The traditional squadron crew room provides one of the few outlets from formal training. Soon after their posting to number six squadron, the students realize that success depends not only on their own efforts, but also on the confidence of their instructors, pilots and navigators with years of experience in the F-111. The instructors too are subjected to constant supervision and revision. The make or break attitude to success results in increased pressure as the occasion of the student's first flight in the aircraft approaches. The route we're going to fly, once we've been out in the training area, will be to fly across the top of Amberley, Cape Byron, Coolmunda Dam, and back to Amberley. 
What could I ex expect the band to look like on the radar? At maximum range, Pete, if you increase the game, you'll find that the outline of the lake will show up uh, as a no-show. In fact, it'll just be a dark return on the radar scope. As you get closer, the shape of the dam wall itself should appear as a bright return on the far side of the no-show. After the turning point, when would we request an airways clearance? On this leg at 9,000 mark, we won't need a clearance until 50 miles, so ask for it somewhere between 70 miles or 80 to go. OK. By the time of the students' first flight, they're expected to be well-versed in the theory of the aircraft and as many of the practical procedures as the simulator permits. But few of them deny a sense of anticipation. I'm fairly excited about today's flight. We've had a lot of work over the last three weeks and this is the climax of it, the first trip. Uh, so I'm just hoping to be able to put all this into practice, not make too many mistakes. The aeroplane itself uh, is really incredible. We've seen a lot of films of it and we've seen it in real life. So uh, this is my first chance to really have a look and see if it all comes to, to life and looks good. Up till now, I've been flying slow aeroplanes. I've been on transports. So going to something that can fly two and a half times the speed of sound is a bit of a step up in the world for me. So I hope I'm not left too far behind in the aeroplane. Your first solo is always very exciting and, and that's hard to beat. However, I'm sure that this trip will probably be almost as exciting as that, perhaps even a little bit more. The student operates the aircraft under the eye of an instructor, but is expected to perform most of the procedures himself. After liftoff, if we have engine malfunctions, we should be able to continue on one engine, and I will turn the air source selector knob off and I'll let you know. We'll climb to a safe height, stay clear of cloud and sort out any problems after that. Understood. I won't take over unless I really have to. Don't expect me to take over. You should be able to handle uh, a simple situation. However, if you need a hand, obviously I'll be there. Oh, Any questions? I understand. The flight path selected for the student's first flight is generally straightforward to enable him to assess the feel of the aircraft. Although the instructors accompany the students during early flight training, the trainees work progressively towards their individual roles as pilots and navigators. The pilot students become specialised in the performance procedures of the aircraft while the navigator students are taught the intricacies of the radar and navigation systems. A special feature of the F-111 is the automatic terrain following radar. Three radar systems feed computers in the aircraft with information about the terrain ahead and below, maintaining the aircraft at a fixed height above the ground, and flying low level at speeds of up to 1,500 kilometers an hour. The radar pattern is constantly changing. The first flight in an F-111 is one that few of the students forget. That flight was pretty exciting. As you imagine, the takeoff in my heart and my lungs and in my throat and a uh, big quip out my spine, but it was really exciting, you know. Can't compare it to anything else. All of the students are expected to undertake their first flight on the same day. The squadron operates a tight schedule, running a constant shuttle service. Students apply the textbook procedures they've learnt in theory. But some of them find the experience different from what they expected. There are noticeable differences between the simulator and the real machine. The first flight requires intense concentration, and it's not until landing that they feel the full effect of the event. We did uh, two or three arrows and, uh, and rolls and things, which were certainly outstanding because I have, have never ever done things like that. They certainly have you working hard on these flights, which takes a little bit of the enjoyment out of it. First trip always is a bit uh, of a gee whiz ride, and uh, so much so that uh, 
it sort of overwhelmed me to the extent that I forgot to do a few things. We lit the afterburners and away it went. It just took off and uh, it was a fantastic feeling. It was a smoother experience than I thought it was going to be to start with. It's a very nice aeroplane. Different to anything I've ever been in before. Thrilling. <laughs> It certainly beats sitting in the classroom, or indeed sitting behind the desk. It's a magnificent sensation. It's, it's a remarkable aeroplane, as we've learned in the last few weeks. Now, I can liken it to my, my first solo. It's very exciting, but uh, the first solo aeroplanes are nothing like this, and I'm, I'm really enjoying myself, and this is fantastic. <laughs>